Good evening. This meeting will now come to order. The City Council will convene on Thursday. Sorry. City Council will convene on Thursday, January 12th to hold a regular meeting at 7.30 p.m. for the purpose of discussing any and all business via in-person and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 40A of Massachusetts General Law and Section 20A, B, and C of the Acts of 2021 signed into law by Governor Baker on June 16th, 2021. Alternative public access to this meeting shall be provided in the following manner. One, this meeting is being televised live by PBD access television on cable channel 9 Two, real-time public comment during public hearings can be addressed to the PBD City Council using the zoom virtual meeting software for remote access users may view the meeting and make a comment or question to the chair via the audio option please visit www.pbd-ma.gov for zoom information this meeting is being taped by PBD access television and is also being recorded by the City Council stenographer let's all rise for a moment of silence Mr. President, for uh, minutes from December 6th and December 8th. You heard the motion by Councillor Gould. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Moving to hearings. Hearing A, concerning a zoning amendment. Amend section six entitled special regulations as follows. By deleting in its entirety section 6.15 mill overlay district as adopted on March 14th, 2019, and inserting in place thereof a new section 6.15 entitled Mill Overlay District. Uh, concerning this uh, zoning amendment, there was communication um, from Andrew Levin, senior planner. Uh, item 8K, could I get a motion to receive item 8K? So moved, Mr. So moved. President. Thank you. Uh, concerning item 8K, uh, the planning board um, is moving this to continue the hearing till January uh, 19th, 2023. Uh, as such, uh, we will schedule this item for a forthcoming agenda. Can I get a motion from anyone to schedule that for the forthcoming agenda? So moved, Mr. President. Hearing the motion, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank President, you. Yes. If I may, uh, I'd like to, under suspension of the rules, receive uh, late communication number two. You heard the motion by Councillor Gamash. All the, in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. The, this is a com uh, communication concerning item 8C. And again, they have asked for a, um, a continuance due to the um, waiting for this ZB, I'm sorry, waiting for um, conservation to give the approval on that application so if I may um. on the motion council Turco through you mr. president um, to madam clerk is I mean this seems to be the longest um, list of continuances I have seen it's been just since July and I just worry that um, you know it's seven months residents have changed uh, you know maybe we re need to re-notice um, if, if you could possibly, if the council is not ob objectionable to it, send out notice to Mr. Kelty if he's not heard at the next meeting that you know, he should withdraw and resubmit the application, and I would appreciate that. Um, I don't know if that needs to be in the form of a motion or if Councillor Gamash would like to comment. Gamash? Yes, it, it's not because Mr. Kelty can't move forward. It's because the zoning board, I mean the um, Conservation Commission, is waiting for information from the Department of Public Services Engineering Department because they made them change their uh, scope of the plan that was approved before, but the, but the application ran out. That's why they're back before us. So it's not because um, the person that looked seeking for the permit has had no, it's not their fault, it's the fault of the, of the Conservation Commission not getting the information from, and they're the ones that are continuing it as well. They've continued it since then. So in order to put the onus on who is responsible, it's not the applicant, it's, it's the city. So I don't think it would be fair to 
have him have to rego, you know, refile by pulling his permit because it's not his fault. Councilor Checo. Thank you. I mean, I understand that. I'm not placing blame on either party, whether it's the city or the uh, or the uh, developer. But I, you know, the concern is the residents, and and you know, this is past the, it's seven months. I think that anywhere else, uh, you know, if we we had a hearing scheduled and seven months later it hadn't been heard, um, thankfully, you know, dozens of residents aren't showing up, you know, every two weeks for these hearings. But it was Councilor Kelty that submitted the request for continuance at Monday night's conservation meeting. He did not state a reason why, but he was the one that submitted the request for continuance um, according to, you know, what was said during that meeting. Um, I just think what's right is, is, is right. Um, we, we have these uh, agendas for a reason. And to keep something on the agenda for, for seven months is a, is a bit excessive. It's my opinion. Um, I, I would like to, I guess we can move forward to Councilor um, Gamasha's vote, but I would also like uh, to, to make a motion, a follow-up motion, to, to have the clerk send that notification to Mr. Kelty that if he's not heard the next meeting, he should withdraw. Whether that's conservation's fault or, or DPS's fault or whoever's it is, Mr. Kelty shouldn't have been on the agenda before he went through the process anyway. He should have gotten his approvals in order and then submitted, you know, to be put on the agenda. Um, and he didn't do that. So he was trying to jump the gun, uh, you know, maybe for the, for the better of his client. Didn't work out the way he wanted it to. But for, to have the clerk print up 100 pages of documents every two weeks uh, is just a waste of time and resources. It's just my, my thought and opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Cherko. There is a motion on the floor from Councilor Gamash to continue this matter. Can we take a vote on that motion and then we'll deal with any subsequent motions thereafter? So on Councilor Gamash's motion to continue, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote, so moved. Councilor Cherko, would you like to make a subsequent motion? I would like to follow, uh, follow up with the motion to request that the clerk send notification to Mr. Kelty that uh, the council uh, uh, would like to him to withdraw and resubmit unless uh, he, he does intend on uh, coming before us at the scheduled date that he asked for, which he can't because um, his continuance requested through the, the uh, Conservation Commission was further out than the continuance he requested from us. So he won't be here at the next meeting, and he already knows that. So I'm just not sure why this continues to happen, but thank you. Uh, that's my motion. On Councilor Turco's motion, any? Yes, Councilor McGinn. Yeah, on the motion, um, Councilor Turco is correct. There is no way it could be heard at the next meeting uh, for the precisely the reason Councilor Turco stated, um, because the Conservation Commission won't meet until I think February eighth. Um, but I'm only I just only add a point that this is perhaps the third requests like this where um, the applicant's attorney knew that and still requested the continuance for our next meeting knowing that it wasn't going to be possible. So I, I, I don't appreciate that when, they're, when the continuance requests are for dates that the attorney knows full well cannot be met. Um, so I'm, I'm in support of um, Councilor Turco's motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council McGinn. Any other uh, discussion? Yes, Council Manning Martin. It's through you to Council Turco. Council Turco, is it your concern mainly that the abutters were notified six months ago and they're not getting notification through this process of continued continuances? Is that the crux of your concern? Through you, Mr. President, to Council Manning Martin. One hundred percent, Councilor. I, I, I just think that you know, seven months. Uh, people change, residences, addresses change, uh, people forget. I think that it should be re-noticed and um, it, it is 100 um, percent the reason why I brought this up. Thank you. Uh, thank you, if I may, yes, uh, Mr. Well. Chairman. Because uh, I agree with you that that's a major concern. Not only in this instance, this just seems to be an extreme one that we can all see the length of time that it's, it's certainly um, extreme. But there are cases where uh, there would be continuances where, say, 25 people show up, 30 people show up, and then it's continued until the uh, residents kind of fall off or forget. So 
and that's certainly a, a ploy in the past and by some attorneys that, that is uh, often used. So I would agree with you that notification is long overdue for this, uh, for these abutters. So I'm wondering if we can come up with uh, some sort of compromise to address this issue going forward that after X amount of times there should, of continuances, that we should require notifications go out again uh, to the abutters, whether it's a third continuance of, uh, or something like that, Councilor Turco, because then you'll capture um, the, what, the continuances that aren't as drastic as this that should be caught as well so that the abutters know what's going on and they, they don't um, forget about it or just gets dragged out so, so long. So that would be a, uh, an additional cost to the applicant though. So sometimes there are uh, abutters, if it's an abutter with surrounded by condominiums, that gets costly. So I think um, we should take that into consideration whether it's a third continuance or something like that. I just want to put that to you uh, for consideration because I, I agree with your motion, but I, I'd rather have it capture this problem in its entirety moving forward than just this one instance. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. Councilor Togo. Thank you, Mr. President. Through you to Councilor Manning Martin. Um, Councilor Manning, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think there should be a limitation. I just don't think that um, this is the time to do that. I think that possibly, uh, I could be wrong that there's a change in council rules or, or you know, uh, maybe something that the clerk needs to get out there. Uh, before we make a, uh, a motion. I could be completely wrong, uh, but I'd like to just move forward with that motion and then we can bring that up maybe during motions, orders, and resolutions for discussion. So. Thank you, Councilor Turco. On Councilor Turco's motion, any further? Yes, Councilor Daigle. Thank you, Mr. President. The only other um, thing, I agree with Councilor Turco, and I, I hate to punish the applicant and add expenses, but um, I do think abutters have changed as well as departmental responses. Uh, the applicant might not have owed taxes back in July when they applied and that situation might have changed. There might be a health violation, other things. So I think that re request needs to be refreshed six months later. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Daigle. Any other councilors? Seeing none on Councilor Turco's motion. All in favor, any opposed? Oh, roll call. Councilors Turco? Yes. Daigle? Yes. O'Neill? Yes. Peach? Yes. Manning Martin? Yes. Gould? Yes. Rosignol? Yes. Gamash? No. Melville? Yes. McGinn? Yes. Welton? Yes. Motion carries 10 to 1. Thank you, councilors. Now we're looking at uh, 4B, hearing regarding special permit for New York Capital Investment Group, LLC, 27 Central Street, regarding the expansion of use for an existing non-conforming car wash facility uh, and installation of new central vacuum systems to replace existing vacuums. Uh, the clerk read the notice um, for this at the initial uh, hearing on December 8th. It has since been continued, so the clerk is not going to reread the notice. Um, Councillor Peach. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive item late one. You heard the motion. All in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, so late one is communication from the applicant um, that, that came from a meeting that we held last Saturday with the, the car wash engineer um, and the, the manager for the car wash and the residents um, surrounding the car wash. So um, this new plan that was submitted is different from the original one that we received back in December. Uh, it, it's only slightly different though um, with what I believe to be traffic improvements. There's additional um, additional planters that will be shortening the, the curb on Hardy Street to you know, make sure people can't come right in off Central Street and to start the queue to the vacuums further on to the side street so it's not 
affecting the traffic on Central Street. There is a reduction of three vacuum stalls, and, and that came um, also with the concern of traffic and safety to reduce that number of, traf of, of vacuum stalls. So that's all reflected on there. We also discussed uh, last meeting certain things um, about signage that I will condition uh, in the permit. Just to give you some background and some feedback from the meeting we had Saturday with the neighbors, the problem that the neighbors have with the car wash does not um, in lie in this special permit. The problem is more the flow of the car wash, which will now access from the rear 100%. That is uh, a use that was, you know, a pre-existing non-conforming. There was a building permit issued for those changes, uh, so that's not what we're here to discuss tonight. When I spoke to the neighbors, my concerns with them and, you know, working with them, I thought maybe we could change some of the flow of the streets. This is surrounded by some one-way streets. They have asked that we just leave it as it is um, and you know see what happens basically and if that becomes an issue for them the traffic on the side streets they can come back to us it has nothing to do with the special permit but we can change ordinances to change the traffic flow of the streets that would better suit their needs um, I in my discussions with the car wash manager uh, one thing that he said really stuck out to me if people are going to attend, going to come to the car wash and they are confused or they're sitting in too much traffic and they don't know what to do, they're not going to return. So it's in their best interest that their staffing, especially in the first you know, six to eight months of this opening, to, to direct traffic and to basically, they say they train their customers because they are a subscription um, based model for car washes, so many of their customers are returning customers over and over again. Um, I, I met with our city engineer, I met with public safety Captain Richards. We discussed a lot of things as far as traffic flow, um, different options that we could come up with that would help the neighbors in any way. There really just isn't a lot of space. These streets are not wide. This is the oldest part of Peabody. Um, so. The, right now, where we stand, this is really the, the best solution. Um, the car wash can open tomorrow, and it will still have the same issues that the, the neighbors are concerned about, regardless if we approve this permit tonight. So um, I, I did speak to the neighbors. I said, if you want me to vote no, I'll vote no. Um, but you know, they do realize that what we're voting on tonight is not, is not what's causing them an issue. They are fine with the vacuums and the way that this plan is drawn up. They were involved in that discussion as well. So I have a list of conditions. Um, I did read them at the last meeting, but to refresh, you know, just the hours of operation, that the pay station and the vacuums won't be lit um, during their off hours, the number of vacuum stalls they're allowed to have, um, how to enter and exit, you know, more specifics, certain signage specifics that were sent by the city um, planner, um, if there's queuing on the public way, they'd be required to hire a police detail, which is something that is common with all their other car washes and communities that they're, they're currently in. Um, not that the queuing is common, but they, that is an agreement that they have with those communities. Um, I will condition, even though I've been told that they will do this, that for the first six months they'll provide additional staff to aid in the traffic flow um, of the car wash. Uh, I will also include su suggestions from the city planner about um, reducing the, the driveways on Central Street and Hardy Street with aesthetically pleasing options. Um, I will also include the zoning ordinance uh, for the downtown design standards. And then I will also include from conservation their, uh, in their departmental response that this is a FEMA flood zone and so an NOI is necessary for any outside work. Um, just so that's on record. So um, I, I, I'll open it up for the applicant to, to answer any questions that the council may still have. Thank you, Councilor Peach. Um, seeing that there's some residents in here, I'd like to ask if anyone would like to speak in favor of this petition. Seeing none, are there any residents here that would like to speak in opposition of this petition? Seeing none, I'd like to go to the Zoom application to see if there's anyone there who'd like to speak in favor. 
Seeing none, I'd like to ask if there's anyone who wants to speak in opposition. Nobody there either, okay. So um, now uh, if the attorney representing the petitioner could approach to answer any questions from the council. Yeah, good evening, Mr. President. Hal Chuba, I'm a consulting engineer and I represent the applicant uh, on this application. And I believe uh, Councillor uh, Peach, well done and well said. So I don't have anything to say. We tried, we met at the, at the site with the neighbors and we're trying to make the best out of the situation that we have. So the proposed uh, improvements that you have uh, on the revised plans are in line with the recommendation of the town uh, planner also. So, and we don't have objection, any objections to the conditions as she stated. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. I'd like to open it up to the council. Yes, Mr. Gould, uh, Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good job, Councilor Peach. Um, it's a very difficult situation when you're representing the constituents and there's a current non-conforming use, as you stated. Uh, sir, can you please tell me um, the traffic is allowed to go up. You're going to route them up Hardy Street and take a left into the back of, no, where are we coming from? Yes, coming up Hardy, take a left on Monroe and take a left to the... Uh uh, it, no, the opposite way. It's coming down on Monroe and take a right to the back of the car wash and exit on Central Street. That's, that's so it's not um, on Hardy at all. You're coming. So in order to get to Monroe, you have to go through the neighborhood. That's what it is right now. Right. Correct. Yeah. And again, we met with the neighbors. They don't want to change. We tried to flip the the traffic, but the neighbors didn't want to do it. So. Wow, I, I know that it's, it's allowed. There's nothing we can do about it. But in order to be a good neighbor, I would think that you'd propose that you'd go through Hadi and see what the city can do to allow. It's a one way going up or coming back. Yes. Councilor Peach, I'll. I'll if Mr. President, if it's okay, Councillor Peach, please. Yes, Councillor Gould. Councillor Peach. Thank you, Mr. President. Through you to Councillor Gould. Um, that, that was the discussion because that uh, traditionally in the past was the route to get to the rear of the car wash. But since, um, since that was really established as a traffic flow for the previous car wash, Monroe Street became a one-way street. It was not previously prior to the Walnut Street condominiums going up. Um, I met with the city engineer in hopes that we could make the bottom portion a two-way to continue that traditional flow into the car wash, but it's not legally wide enough for us to make it a two-way street. Um, so the only, the only option really would be to flip the one way. Um, that was the initial discussion with the neighbors, but the more that they thought about it and talked about it, um, just the way that all, all of the one ways flow in that area they would be required to go to Central Street in order to get to their house because Hardy is also a one way that flows towards Wallace Street. So there, there really is no great option here. Hardy Street will be used to enter the vacuums, to enter the, the lot itself, and then you would exit onto to Central Street. And um, the discussion with the neighbors really was they'd, they'd prefer at this point to just leave, leave the streets as they are. Um, and, and if it becomes an issue, because of course, my big concern and what I thought the big concern from the neighbors, it is, but um, is just the number of, of increased traffic through Elm Street and onto Monroe Street. So, uh, but just talking with them about it, about changing the one way, they'd rather wait to see instead of, you know, jumping the gun to see what it's really going to be like, how much more traffic it will be than you know, subjecting themselves to having to go to Central Street every time to come home because they won't, right now, if they're coming from Salem, they can go down Elm Street and come down Monroe. They don't need to uh, hit the downtown street, and especially they mentioned with the Central Street project happening this year, they would prefer to avoid that as much as possible, <laughs> so. Mr. President, through you to Councilor Peach, please. Uh, uh, Councilor Peach, can you, go back to that intersection and tell me exactly, Monroe Street is a one-way currently coming down to Hardy or going up to going. If, if I come to the intersection of Hardy and Monroe, which way does that one-way street arrow go currently? 
Currently, um, you cannot go up Monroe Street from Hardy Street. It's a one way down to Hardy Street, and when you come down Monroe Street, you need to continue down Hardy to Wallace Street. That's the only direction out, out of that neighborhood. And you said that you looked at flipping the beginning part of that, and that wasn't amendable by the, the, the uh, neighbors? Through you, Mr. President, um, it, it's not, that is what the neighbors wanted. It's not wide enough, meeting with the city engineer. It couldn't be a two way street there. Um, if there were anything were to happen and we sanctioned that as a city, you know, th we, we run into a liability issue there. Um, it, it's really a no-win situation right now for the neighbors. Um, and, and the issue that, that they're having, like I said, is going to happen whether or not we approve this permit. So uh, that, that's where, I, where the, the converse, you know, the, the hard, conversation really is is um, and there is a lot that's privately owned that's on Hardy Street behind the car wash and that just the, how old this neighborhood is the the lot line goes right up to the public way there's really just there's nowhere to go there's no sidewalks here there's we, I, I thought of every single situation we could think of and none of them result in a better situation really. so Councilor Peach if I could please Mr. President um, the, how many cars do we expect to, well, sir, how many cars do you expect to go through that car wash a day? A, approximate. Hi, uh, yeah, introduce yourself. Yeah. Ken Calabro, I'm the car wash division manager for Prestige. So the, the marketing study that we had there uh, projected between 40 and 50,000 cars annually, uh, which averages between 109 and 136 cars per day. So we're going to bring 50,000 cars in through a neighborhood off Elm Street. 50,000 cars are going to go through that intersection and well, creep behind that, through that neighborhood. There are, there are cars that currently go through the neighborhood now. I've, got, I've used your car wash. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I, I no, apologize. That's okay. No, you finish first, please. No, no. I, there, there are cars that go through the neighborhood now. The, the, best, uh, the information we had from the prior owner said about 50% of the cars were exterior and went are using the route that we're talking about here tonight. Uh, the, uh, the full service customers would enter in, um, I, I don't know the name of the side street, but would not have to go Hardy. through the neighborhood. Uh, is that Hardy Street? Okay. Um, so, you know, it, the, the traffic is, it doesn't come in 100 cars a day. You know, days like today you have zero. Um, you know, uh, our busier days are typically Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, weather, weather permitting. Um, and, you know, we, have, we will work with everybody if we have to have traffic directed, like we said, for the first six or eight months or however long it takes, we'll provide additional staffing to make sure it flows as, as smoothly as we can get it to flow. So I've used your car wash and um, I thought it was the best deal going. You could go in and get a complete clean interior exterior, but I've also used the just an exterior and I've always banged up the, the one way going the wrong way for 50. 15, 20 feet, 20 yards rather, and hung a left. Now you're telling me you're going to bring 50,000 cars down Elm Street, down Monroe Street, and into that neighborhood. I, I believe the volume at the, at the old, um, under the prior operator was um, probably around 35,000 cars. So we, we, there, we, we do project an increase based on the marketing study. Um, but we don't, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. You think you're going to be a good neighbor? You can't I'm sorry? be. A good, you cannot be perceived as a good neighbor in the long run if you're bringing 50,000 cars through that tight, tight, oldest neighborhood in the city. I just can't believe it. I'm, I'm flabbergasted. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Gould. Councilor Rosignol. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, through you to Councilor Peach. Um, thank you for doing your due diligence and looking out for the residents. Um, as you already stated, um, we don't have any jurisdiction where it is a um, pre-existing non-conforming. We cannot change what their design is, even though, as Councilor Gould mentioned, it is um, extremely um, difficult to even digest this different 
traffic pattern compared to the way the car wash was historically used. Historically, you went on Central Street, you went through the car wash, you came back out on Central Street, and the neighborhood behind was very rarely, if ever, impacted. This car wash has been there for as far back as anyone that's from Peabody can remember. I, that goes for all of us. Um, so this new traffic pattern now brings Monroe and brings Hardy and brings Monroe Court and brings Elm Street now into the picture where it never did before. So th this entire thing is a complete, in my opinion, change of use, even though it is still technically under the same usage because it's still a car wash. So that's my little rant as far as what's being proposed what we get to vote on is the vacuums in itself. Um, I wasn't, I, I didn't know that there was going to be a neighborhood meeting. I, I would have attended on Saturday. I did go to this property. I did measure from the building to the end of the property line. There is no way you're going to be able to fit two-way traffic plus parking in that area. Going from the building to the edge of your property line at its shortest is 30 feet, at its longest is 34. If a parking space is 9 feet by 18 feet and you have two cars side by side, that's 36 feet that you need to traverse the side of your building and you do not have that. You have 34. So I don't understand how this will even work with cars parked, we'll say horizontally, and then two cars coming by behind it. It, it. it just, by square footage, it just doesn't make sense to me. Um, so that's the only thing that we get to vote on tonight is whether um, to allow the vacuums. For that reason, I, I cannot, um, in good conscious, conscience, um, support this as it's constituted. I know, Councilor Peach, you've done a, a great job uh, talking to the neighbors behind the car wash, trying to get them to um, understand that this change of usage and getting them to, to feel comfortable, at least to the best they can, with what's being proposed. So I commend you. Um, but I, I just, I can't, uh, um, I can't support this the way it's constituted. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Rosenall. Any other councilors? Thank you, Mr. President. I do, I do understand um, what Councilor Rosenall is saying with, with the, um, the width of, of of the area where the vacuums are. Um, just, I don't know if you're aware, but the through you to Councilor Rosenall, the width of the stalls is about twice the size of a parking spot. So there is more area. Uh, it's not like pulling out of a mall parking spot. Uh, so it's easier to maneuver your car out and in. Um, and, and that was really what made me feel more comfortable when I walked the site with, with them and with the neighbors. Um, and then also the reduction of the number of vacuums that were there. So I was looking at the, the lines on the ground as far as, you know, if we had 13 stalls, we would now reduce them to 10. So um, that allows for them to be wider. Uh, and also going with um, just reducing, you know, so they have three existing vacuums. So if we're talking about pre-existing non-conforming use, they can still operate with the three vacuums. I am not an expert on whether they could replace those vacuums. I would assume they could and upgrade those vacuums and still operate with three, and then we're gonna run into an issue of people queuing, waiting for vacuums. So my concern really is from the vacuum standpoint is the queuing on Central Street, um, which is why I wanted to push the entrance further down Hardy Street to get onto their lot, just to try to you know, curb any of that. Um, I understand that your your stance and you know everyone has their own vote so I just wanted to address that though that they're not uh, if people at home are visualizing a parking spot like you're at the mall it's about twice the the width of one of those spots so it does make it uh, much easier to maneuver your car or a larger car in and out I did also want to mention that you know talking about the neighbors the lot that is you can't see it on this map but um, you see the driveway into the car wash tunnel. There is a proposed, um, an approved plan for housing um, that's a by-right project that has their driveway basically across from 
this driveway. So um, that's you know another issue down the road for us as a city to deal with. Um, you know that we had people go through the process of getting something approved, going through all the correct channels, and then a use on an abutting lot is is not the use is not changing, but the the traffic flow certainly is. So. Um, you know, that's just something to keep in mind, that the, these lots that abut here do have an approved project through CONCOM, um, and that's going to cause issue there. So, I, I, again, I just want to reiterate to my fellow councillors um, that we are only voting on the vacuums, and because there are three existing vacuums, they can just operate with three vacuums, so they choose. Um, the amount of, I'm speculating, but uh, the amount of money that was spent to purchase this and then also renovate it, I don't see whether we, like, if, if we don't approve this tonight, I don't think that stops this business from opening, and that's not really my goal either. Um, would I approve a brand new car wash in the middle of a neighborhood? Absolutely not. Uh, but as you said, this car wash has existed long before I was even born. So um, it, it's something that's here. Uh, they. They had egress to the back. I know, as Councillor Gould mentioned, people have used that 20-foot strip on Monroe Street to go up and enter, and, and the neighbor said, well, why can't they just keep doing that? And I said, well, I can't condition a permit to do something illegal. Um, so we're, we're at a point here where um, the issue that the neighbors have with this business is not the issue of the special permit. So I just want to reiterate that for everyone um, that there, certainly this is not a great idea. This is not something that we, we went out and we, as a city, advocated for someone to purchase this car wash and to change the flow of traffic, but it is the reality and it's what's before us tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Peach. Councillor Rosignol, then Councillor Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I applaud you for the changes that have been made and, and I agree. Um, Lessening the number of spots is ideal, and queuing on Hardy is absolutely needed. Um, so I, I, I do want to commend you for all of your hard work and your due diligence regarding the changes that have been made on this plan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Rosenau. Councilor Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. To you, through you to the applicant, sir. My cheat is not working very well tonight. I, that's such a small map. The last on the map, the last third of an area that's parallel to Hardy Street um, before you come to the intersection of Monroe, what is, what is that? Is that just open land? Do yes, you know, sir. Do you know it's where I'm all talking? Open. Hardy is all open from the intersection to the, to the retaining wall. It's all open, yes. Again, being a good neighbor, could you enter? Could you go Hardy Street and take a left before you come to Monroe? Could yes, you, you could you create an opening? That's what it, you you go up Hardy and take a left into the into the property. Yes, you can to use the vacuums. To use the vacuums. Yes. I'm saying to. But to, if you you can't enter the tunnel, you have to go from the back. I'm saying, could you enter the car wash going down Hardy? No, you can't. There's no room with the... Uh, with no, the you, you'll have to enter through the middle of the tunnel. I don't think this is feasible. Mr. President, if, if I may, in, in Councilor Peach, I think uh, you're on the same page here. I believe that's a parcel. And could you speak to that, Councilor Peach, for Councilor Gould? Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Through you to Councilor Gould. That's a privately owned lot, so it's a thank separate you. lot. I, yeah, and it's actually fenced off. So thank you. I just got that through Council again. Oh. Thank you, Council again. So that's a different property owner. All right. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Gould. Thank you, Council Peach, for the clarification. Any other councilors? Councilor Peach. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to close the public hearing. You heard the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Speech. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to approve the special permit application from New York Capital Investment Group, LLC, 500 Turnpike Street, Canton, Mass., requesting the expansion of use for existing non-conforming car wash facility and installation of a new central vacuum system to replace existing vacuums at 27 Central Street with the following conditions. 
condition the hours of operation for the summer to be Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for winter being Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. with the differentiate between summer and winter being daylight savings. Condition that the pay station and vacuum stations will not be lit during off hours. Condition that there will only be 10 vacuum stalls. Condition trash receptacles are located at each vacuum station. Condition to enter on Hardy only and exit on Central Street only. With additional signage, no entrance on Central Street and entrance on Hardy Street signage directing traffic from vacuums to exit to Central Street and enter the, enter the car wash from the rear. If there is queuing on the public way, the car wash will hire a police de detail to assist with traffic flow. For the first six months, the car wash will provide additional staff to aid in the traffic flow of the car wash. Uh, clarify that first six months of being open, not of this permit being issued. Um, as suggested by community development condition, the driveways on Central and Hardy are reduced with an aesthetically pleasing option such as wooden guardrails or planters. For the avoidance of doubt, zoning ordinance section five shall apply, including the Peabody Downtown Design Standards Main Street Subdistrict, including but not limited to the extent such standards pertain to exterior renovation signs, lighting, and landscape buffers. And from conservation, condition the, pro con the following condition, an NO um, the property is a FEMA AE flood zone, an NOI is necessary for any future outside work to commence if the engineer feels Engineer of record feels the elevation is out of the flood zone and RDA is necessary to memorialize the decision. So moved. Thank you, Councilor Peach. You've heard the motion. Any discussion on the motion? Councilor McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Through you to Councilor Peach. Um, do you want to make specific reference to the revised site plan that was submitted with the late communication? Um, and I, I find it to be a little confusing because I, I, the, the date on that site plan is the same as the date on the original site plan. So I guess somehow distinguish that that's the site plan of record, uh, you know, as submitted with uh, late communication one, perhaps. Thank you, Council. Again, Council Peach. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, to add to the conditions. Uh, that the, the site plan of record for this special permit is the one accepted tonight, um, January 12th, yeah, 2023, um, in late communication one. Thank you, Councilor Peach. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, roll call vote. Councilor Turco. Yes. Daigle. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Peach. Yes. Manny Martin. Yes. Gould. No. Rosignol. No. Gamash. Yes. Melville. Yes. McGinn. Yes. Welton. Yes. Motion carries nine to two. Thank you. Thank you, Petitioner. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Moving on, there's no reports of committees this evening, so we're going to move to motions, orders, and resolutions. Councilor Turco. I have no motions, but uh, on behalf of you, Mr. President, um, uh, move to receive item 8A, receive and approve all papers being in order, item 8A. Thank you, Councilor Gould. On, uh, you've heard, <laughs> excuse me. Thank you, Councilor Turco. Um, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Councilor Turco. Thank you, Mr. President. Also, um, a co-motion with you, move to receive and approve all papers being in order, item 8E. Thank you, Councilor Turco. All in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Councilor Turco. No further motions. Thank you, Councilor Turco. Councilor Daigle. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, um, motion to approve item 9E, block party request for three to seven Columbus Road on August 25th, 2023. Subject to all papers being in order. So moved. Thank you, Councilor Daigle. You've heard the motion. Any discussion? Seeing none. Um, all in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Councilor Daigle. No further motions. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Daigle. Councilor O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. No motions this evening. 
Thank you, Councillor O'Neill. Councillor Peach. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive item 8C. You've heard the motion. No discussion. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Councillor Peach. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive item 9B. Just take them all, I guess. Um, enter entertainment license, Asia Taste Cafe and Grill, 635 Lowell Street, and set up a public hearing. Do you need to do them all separate? Allison. Uh, the, the clerk is affirming yes, they need to be done separate and request a public hearing for each. Okay. So moved. Council Peach. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive and set up a public hearing for item 9B, Brothers Deli Restaurant, 11 Main Street. You can finish them all. Finish them all and yeah. then do it? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, Maki Sushi Bar, 43 Main Street, Oliveira's Restaurant, 135 Washington Street, from Brazil Restaurant, 72 to 74 Walnut Street, Tokyo Steakhouse, 300 Andover Street. So moved. You've heard the motion. Any discussion? All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Councilor Peach. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive item 9C and set up a public hearing. You've heard the motion. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Council Peach. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive item 9J and approve all papers being in order. Fortune teller license, PBD Psychic 245 Andover Street. Fortune teller license, Mrs. Russell Psychic Studio 259 Andover Street. Thank you, Council Peach. You've heard the motion. All in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Council Peach. Thank you, Mr. President. Under suspension of the rules, move to receive item 8I. You've heard the motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Any opposed? It's a vote. Councilor Peach. Thank you, Mr. President. On that um, 8I that we received, that was a cease and desist letter to the Albanian Boston community at 26 Howley Street um, that has special permit two from last year um, for um, that, that was issued prior to New Year's Eve um, for an advertised party that would contain alcohol, but their special permit specifically requires no alcohol on the premises. Um, so I'd like to make a co-motion with Councillor Gould after um, several calls that we've received prior to the cease and desist from, from residents um, for a show cause hearing for the Albanian um, Brotherhood. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Peach. On the motion, any discussion? All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Councilor Peach. Thank you, Mr. President. One final motion. Um, I would like to request DPS install a stop sign at Monroe Court in Central Street. There's currently a stop line, but no stop sign, um, which was a raised concern from the residents talking about the car wash. So moved. Thank you, Councilor Peach. Uh, can you amend that to draft and advertise as well? Oh, it's an existing stop. There's a stop line, just no stop sign anymore. Yeah, we gotta advertise a stop sign? The ordinance is already existing for the stoppage at that line? Or is it, or do we need an ordinance? I mean, it's a street onto a main road, I would hope so, but can, we, can, I, can I move that we advertise it if it doesn't exist? So moved. <laughs> You've heard the motion. Any discussion? All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Councilor Peach. No further motions this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Peach. Councilor Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make uh, my annual motion to review and release all executive session meeting minutes that are no longer in litigation. So moved. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. You've heard the motion. On the motion, any discussion? All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Councilor Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as, as we've all uh, either read or heard recently that the J.B. Thomas and potentially the Endicott Street um, affordable housing units may fall off our subsidized housing inventory, uh, bringing our number uh, down, although we are 
pretty well over 10% right now, but it will bring our number down significantly. So what I'd like to do is um, have the city council do an internal audit of all our subsidized housing inventory number to make sure that we agree with the calculations that are being sent forth to the state with respect to what's been counted and what will be falling off in the future. And I'd like to refer that to industrial and community development. So moved. Thank you, Council Manning Martin. Having heard the motion, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Uh, excuse me, Councilor O'Neill. Through you, uh, Mr. President, just would like to ask Council Manning Martin, when you say audit, um, how would you envision the City Council to do that? Thank you. Councilor Manning Martin. Thank you, uh, through, through you to Councilor O'Neill. Just a choice of words to review um, and make sure we agree with w what the numbers that are being counted and sent into the state so that we have a part in, in uh, reviewing it and agreeing with those numbers that are being sent in and calculated uh, from community development and sent to the state. I want to make sure that we know what's being sent in and that we agree and that everything is being counted. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. Councilor O'Neill. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, through you, I guess I might ask uh, Chairman Gould, as part of ICD, I would love to have just a meeting set up so where Kurt Belvance and, and Community Development could come and actually present to us. I think that would be more helpful to us, but that'd just be my idea that we have a discussion so we can get an up-to-date list and discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor O'Neill. Councilor Gould. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, to your question, Councilor O'Neill, yes, I envision that. And Councilor Manning Martin, you've been very prominent about um, our numbers through the housing plan, and I think it's good. I think it's refreshing, and we'll do that through community development. So if that answers anyone's questions. Thank you, Councilor Gould. Councilor Manning Martin. <laughs> That's all I was asking. It's not difficult, and I know you'll do a good job in um, getting it done. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. Councilor Manning Martin. Oh, no. That's enough for me tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. No Co motions, Mr. President. Councilor Gould, okay. Thank you, Councilor Gould. Councilor Rosignol. No motions this evening. Thank you, Council President. Thank you, Council Rosignol. Council Gamash. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. Um, moving to item 8F, um, transfer of special permit for Richard Kumpel, 288 Newbury Street, set up, um, received this communication, set up a public hearing. Thank you, Council Gamash. You've heard the motion on the motion. Any discussion? Yes, Council McGinn. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, through you to Council Gamash. Is the hearing necessary for this? It's situation? necessary on item 8D. I mean, late, um, where is it? RBK 288 Newbury Street hearing necessary. Transfer. Is that a typo or? Because it's conflicting in both. So we need a hearing for the transfer of the Class II license, Councillor, but not for the transfer of the special permit. The request is coming from the Building Commissioner's Office to transfer the special permit. And that's usually just to receive and approve, and they we'll abide by the same approve and abide by the same conditions, and then the transfer, okay. So move to receive. receive. Council Gamash, would you like to amend that to receive and approve? Re receive and approve, yes. Thank you, Council Gamash. You've heard the motion. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Item 8G, um, there are no special permits. So it's a cease and desist letter for 25 Farm Ave. There are no special permits on the property. This is for informational purposes only. So move. Thank you, Council Gamash. You've heard the motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Council Gamash. Item 8H, it's the uh, recommendation from the Rent Control Board for Max Trailer Park application for discontinuous permit. Move this to go to legal. Thank you, Councillor Gamash. Um, on the motion, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Councillor Gamash. Um, under suspension of the rules, item 
D, Class 2 Motor Vehicle License Transfer. I became Otis 288 Newbury Street, moved to receive and set up a uh, hearing. Thank you, Council Gamash. On the motion, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Council Gamash? Um, 9F, under suspension of the rules, Class 1 Motor Vehicle License, 2023 Renewal, Flagship Motor Cars, 202 Newbury Street. Move approval, all papers being in order. Thank you, Council Gamash. On the motion, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Council Gamash? Yes, at this point, um, Class uh, Item 9G, Class 2 Motor Vehicle License, 2023 Renewal Auto, American Auto Export, 484 Lowell Street, Auto Express 98 Foster Street, Auto Transports of New England, 55 Real Linfield Street, Legacy Auto Sales 92 Forest Street, Easy Up Cars 20 Wallace Street, Wilson Square Auto Sales 2 Andover Street, Move and Approval, all papers being in order. Thank you, Council Gamash. You've heard the motion. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Uh, 9I. Under suspension of the rules, in hold the license 2023 renewal, extended stay, America Suite, number 966, 200 Jubilee Drive, and Spring Hill Suites, 43 Newbury Street. Move approval, all papers being in order. Thank you, Council Gamash. On the motion, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Uh, item number 10A, move to receive under suspension of the rules. It's from Thomas St. Pierre, Acting <coughs> Building Commissioner. Um, for the transfer of special permit 1-2007 CF Elite Club PBD LLC doing business as CF Elite Sports Clubs 190-194 uh, Newbury Street. One question to the city clerk, are the taxes been taken care of? Yes, they have. Council. They have. That's what was holding it up. I move approval, all papers being in order. Thank you, Council Gamash. No further motion. I'm sorry, what? That was a little fast for me. Which property? It, um, it was uh, the sports club. It's the old latitude. It's 10A, Councilor Manning Martin. Yeah, 10A. Thank you. So you didn't do H yet, right? Entertainment licenses? H? No, I didn't do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. You've heard the motion from Councilor Gamash. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Councilor Gamash. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Gamash. Councilor Melville. Uh, 9H, entertainment license, 2023 <coughs> renewal, with all papers being in order, uh, Amigos Restaurant, Mexican uh, Kitchen, 210 Andover Street, Boston Marriott Peabody, 8A Central uh, Centennial Drive, Brody's Pub, 10 and a half Lowell Street, Daniela's Restaurante, 41 Cross Street, Holiday Inn, 1 Newberry Street, Knights of Columbus, 96 Main Street, Polana Restaurant, 9 R Sylvan Street, and Salem Country Club, 133 Forest Street. Now move to approve with all papers being in order. Thank you, Councilor Melville. <clears throat> Excuse me, on the motion, Councilor Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll be uh, careful not to use any trigger words. Um, so, 9H Salem Country Club, 133 Forest Street. I know last year we did not renew it. So, um, they went all through, and correct me if I'm wrong, th uh, through you, Mr. Ch Chairman, to the clerk, but we didn't renew it in 22, yet they still provided entertainment throughout 22. And... Now they're up for, this is under renewal for 2023, so how can we renew something that we never approved in 22? I would uh, consider that that they need to reapply. So I, I believe that Salem Country Club needs to reapply. And actually this may apply to other entertainment licenses throughout the year. I know also that last year we had identified or asked Allison, uh, the clerk, to identify businesses that did not renew their entertainment license. Some of them had been a full year. Some had been more than a year. They need to pay a fee. They need to renew. Um, I think, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, that that was referred to legal affairs, um, got buried and never came out. So I'd like to take a look at that again. Uh, get a list of all the entertainment licenses or any other licenses that are expired. These individuals owe money. They should be ap applying. They should be renewing. And they, we should hold them accountable if they're not. Uh, and I'd like to bring in the new building commissioner to advise uh, how we can get this done because we had a problem last year and it's continuing into this year, so I'd like to address it. So I'm going to vote not to 
renew an expired license for a Salem Country Club, and I suggest that they reapply. So I will uh, vote to approve your motion, Council Melville, without Salem Country Club. I'll amend my motion to break them off. Uh, Thank you, Council Melville. So let me go through those, and I have a question about the Salem Country Club one. Sure. So. Thank uh, you, Council Melville. So move to approve entertainment licenses for all of listed in item 9H, except for Salem Country Club, so moved. You've heard the motion. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed? It's a vote. Councilor Melville. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, to the, through you to the city clerk, did, did we receive, I, for some reason, I, I could be wrong, Councilor Manny Martin might be correct, we might not have never received it, but I thought we received it after like a two week I thought there was one meeting where we didn't renew their entertainment license. Do we ever get anything after that? It was put on hold until... So we never received it. Okay. It was put on hold. And Thank it was you. never taken up again. So this goes to that part where it says all papers being in order. So they're, obviously their papers wouldn't be in order. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so uh, I'd make a motion uh, to... Uh, all papers being in order to approve the Salem Country Club, 133 Forest Street. Um, so moved. Thank you, Councilor Melville. On the motion, any discussion? The motion was for Salem Country Club entertainment license to be approved pending all papers being in order. Yes, Councilor Gould. Mr. President, uh, through you to uh, Clerk Danforth. Allison, what's the process when somebody doesn't come forward to Council Manning Martin's point and, and renew their permit. Do you chase them? Do you, I mean, you, you have so much to do. Well, in the case of Salem Country Club, we did have an application for them last year, and they did pay their money for their renewal, we did, but we did not renew it. Pay their money? Yes. Okay. And we did not renew it because it never... They, the process never called for us to... It came before us, but... It, it, we took no action and held it. So it's on us. That was on us. I don't recall it coming before us for another vote, but I mean, I... the process, Allison, when someone does that and the application comes eventually with the money, does that get noted in? Do you then come before us again for another approval? And is that what happened? Well, I know I'm sounding redundant, but I just want to clarify. Well, in the case of Salem Country Club, Counselor, it was held until the litigation and the Conservation Commission did their due diligence. And so that's why it was held. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councilor Gould. Councilor Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, they're still in with the Conservation Commission, and they were with them last night. And it was a debacle. They were ordered by the uh, Conservation Commission to provide a restoration plan. It wasn't a suggestion. It was an order. They're like, nah, they're not going to do it. And they also uh, had agreed that they were ordered to pay for a peer review after they were allowed to negotiate that price down. Meh, yeah, they're not going to do it. That's what went on last night. Yet they come forward with us to, for us to rub a stamp what they need, when they need it, and they, the, their actions have been deplorable. They've treated the Conservation Commission members terribly, it's been, and it's been going on for over a year. They want something from us. They were found guilty of wiping out trees, hundreds of them. They've been ordered by the authority, the Conservation Commission, that has the authority to make these orders, and that is, why, that is their position. And they're doing their due diligence, they're doing their job, they're ordering fees, they're ordering steps to be taken, and the Salem Country Club does not get told what to do. That's what's going on. So I'm not, I'm not going to give them their, their entertainment license until they start behaving as anyone else would. Pay your taxes, pay your fees, 
Don't break any laws, and when you get caught, mea culpa. Pay your fines. Submit your restoration plan. Do what you're ordered to do when you're found guilty of a crime. They're not. So I'm not, I'm not going to rub a stamp their request for an entertainment license. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. Councilor Rosenthal, did you? Nothing? Okay. Councilor Gould? Okay. Any other discussion? Okay, on the motion, Councilor Melville has uh, requested Salem Country Club entertainment license, all papers being in order is the motion. Roll call vote. Councilors Turco? No. Daigle? No. O'Neill? Yes. Peach? No. Manny Martin? No. Gould? No. Rosignol? Yes. Gamash? Yes. Melville? Yes. McGinn? Yes. Welton? Yes. Motion carries six to five. Council Manning Martin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to get a list of all the uh, outstanding licensees. Um, I know you went through this routine last year, um, Allison, so I'm sorry that all that work was ignored. So what I would like you to do is do it again, please, and I'd like to refer it to the building commissioner, the new one, uh, that can uh, address it, act on it, um, and imp implement better oversight that these things are done and that they're paying their fees and that they're not operating without the appropriate licenses. So moved. Thank you, Councilor Manning Martin. You've heard the motion. On the motion, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Councilor Melville. Uh, on that particular item, that was something that uh, Allison and I were discussing earlier that I was going to actually bring up, so thank you, Councillor. I believe, Allison, we, we're currently working with the, uh, um, his name is escaping me right now. Yeah, we had talked about this last year, it, and I, I, we had done a follow-up on that. Are we seeing any results from that? Well, Councillor, if you see the entertainment licenses under 9H, um, Inspector Terranzoni has gotten all of those businesses to submit their paperwork. Some of them have been around for quite a while wow. and have not had entertainment licenses, so he's been a very big help. Okay. But we always have the people who kind of drag their heels. Yeah, that's a problem. I agree. That is an issue. And um, especially because it is fee-driven, and it also, it's, I, you know, as I brought up before, it's, it's a problem for the clerk's office that they have like a rolling renewal season instead of being able to renew in the, in the time frame that it's supposed to, I think it's problematic. So I, I think I'm glad to hear that that's happening. Um, with that being said, I have no other motions this evening. Thank you, Councilor Melville. Councilor McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, and the suspension of the rules moved to receive item 7A and refer to finance, so moved. Thank you, Councilor McGinn. You've heard the motion. On the motion, any discussion? Seeing none. All, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. On suspension of the rules, move to receive item 8B. So move. Thank you, Councilor McGinn. You've heard the motion. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Councilor McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. On suspension of the rules, move to receive item 8J. So moved. Thank you, Councilor McGinn. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Thank you, Mr. President. In suspension of the rules, uh, yeah, move to receive item 8D, so moved. Thank you, Councilor McGinn. You've heard the motion on the motion. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Councilor McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. In suspension of the rules, move to receive item 9A and approve all papers being in order. Taxi limo driver license, John Miller license number 15, so moved. Thank you, Councilor McGinn. You've heard the motion. On the motion, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. Councilor McGinn. Thank you, Mr. President. No further motions. Thank you, Councilor McGinn. 
Can I get a motion to adjourn? So uh, moved. Excuse me. Sorry, Councillor Turco. Thank you for coming back to me, Mr. President. My apologies. I, I neglected to make that motion that we had discussed um, regarding continuances. Um, so the issue of continuances and whether there's a will to change the rules of the council to um, address the number of continu continuances allowed in or um, possibly re-noticing after a certain amount of continuances, I'd like to refer to uh, um, ICD, if you don't mind. On the motion, Councilor Melville. Uh, just on that, Councilor uh, Turco, I, you know, when I was in, I remember we did a hearing on this in legal affairs. I think Councilor Manny Martin had, had something that, uh, in 2019. Was, that, was it 2019? I think we did it in 2019 on this particular issue on advertisements and butter notifications. One thing that came up, and I'm just bringing it up so I don't forget it, so when we talk about it in the future, is that you could condition the continuance regarding you'd have to re advertise. So the person, you could make that a condition of, we will continue this, but you have to pay for the re-advertisement. It just dawned on me. I didn't want to forget it before we ended it. So it's just something everybody can keep in the back of their mind. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Melville. Councilor Trico. Thank you so much for the reminder, Councilor Melville. That, that's actually, I just briefly said that Council uh, uh, Daigle, that um, you know, maybe that's something we could do. So I'm glad that um, that's already been done. So with that being said, um, I'll still move forward with the moving of a discussion, whether it goes anywhere to ICD, uh, the issue of uh, the amount of continuances the council would would uh, consider. As, Thank uh, you, Councilor Turco. Um, just to clarify, the, uh, the clerk thinks that maybe legal affairs should be the appropriate place to I take that I will move up. that to legal affairs. Uh, Thank so you. Moved, so yeah. moved. On the motion, any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, any opposed, it's a vote. I'll take a motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.